Howdy y'all, DJTJ here with Inkscape tutorial number 27, Mesh Gradient. Okay, so the Mesh Gradient tool is down here on the bottom of your toolbox. It's right under the regular gradient tool. It's called Create and Edit Meshes. Um, so I've made a couple little on buttons and I'm going to give a little demonstration of how different gradients look on this so you'll get a better understanding so first we have selected this and we'll go ahead and select on the gradient make sure that it has a linear set and we'll just drag that down I'll use the same color for all of these which is just the red FF0000 And let's select the next one. Let's go to our gradient. Go ahead and set it for a radial. Draw that out. So these are your two standard sort of gradients and this is sort of the effect you can work with to get those and these buttons don't look you know horrible they would suffice for um, any sort of interface but we're going to go and add gradient meshes on the bottom one to show you how much more control you would have over these. So first off select your gradient mesh and let's look at the settings real quick. The rows and columns should be set pretty low at first I would not set them high um, until you sort of get a better understanding of what you're doing with these because if I set these up to let's just say 8 and then I go and select the object double click that's how many different areas are going to appear and this is how you'll have to edit and deal with every single one of those little points where they intersect that can be a little overwhelming especially for something as simplistic as this so let's control Z that go back to our mesh and let's lower these down to 2 that way it will give you a lot more uh, clean workspace and as you get better and more advanced with the tool you can up the rows and columns and get um, more control over what you're doing alright so once your object is selected and we will go ahead and create mesh gradient this is the standard one that you would basically use most of the time it'll be the it'll come out at the size of your bounding box and you just need to apply it by double clicking on the selected objects and there you go now we're going to go ahead and get the zoom tool let's zoom into this we'll go back to the mesh so you can sort of see what's going on here okay so you have diamonds and the diamonds are actually going to be the areas that your color is held at so if I if you select a diamond and change this color that's what's going to be um, outputted from that from that node the circles are the controls for it and if you left click hold and drag you can see how it's adjusting this line of where that gradient is sort of pulling out and it also is adjust, you know, how how powerful it is, how far away it is, and all that. And each one of these diamonds are calculating the color of every other diamond along the grid. So, or at least the next one in in line. And these are the nodes that sort of let you a little bit more power, a little bit less power. Now the best and easiest way that I found I'll control Z a few times um, the easiest way that I found to sort of manipulate and change things especially if you're building something from scratch if you're duplicating an object like a JPEG that you've imported um, a cup the color picker tool here um, or here is really handy to to get the colors of things straight but if you're just building this button from scratch like we are um, it's very handy to go up to the edit paths tool and you can come in to all these nodes select and then we'll select the color I'll go around and select every diamond and change it to the color Whoops. 
and change it to the color that I want it to be. Now this goes back to once again why it's sort of handy to have less columns and paths because it could be a tedious process. Okay, we'll go and leave that one white. We will change that one. Okay, so I have the node selected and then I can go in and start. Let's add a little yellow to it. Let's darken that up. Maybe go down here. Let's darken that up. Um, we can come to this node. Maybe add a little bit more yellow. I'm going to press 5, zoom out. So you see how, as opposed to just the regular radio or linear, it sort of has more viability. I can add in a lot more colors wherever I want to. I can add in shading pieces wherever I want. And it's a lot easier to make something look dynamic. Now, the next one is create conical gradient. So I'll select that. I'll leave it at 2 and 2. Notice also I have, um, if you've watched the previous tutorials, especially with the gradient, we've sort of gone over what most of the edit stroke and, and gradients. A lot of the, the theory on this is the same as the gradient or just editing nodes in general. So I won't go over editing the stroke gradient, but it works basically the same as um, just the regular fill gradient. So I have create conical gradient. Let's double click that. Now, the difference is, is this was a circle, and it made a circle. So a conical is going to make it round. Now that can be handy. Let's go here to demonstrate. We will go apply a conical to this too, and notice how that comes in round. The conical gradient is really handy to work with for round objects. Um, they can it or roundish objects so you can stretch and move these out and adjust it around to fill whatever you want to fill but you just realize that it's starting as a round as opposed to something else let's control Z a couple times and we're gonna press 4 and we'll press 3 okay the one bad thing about using the edit pass tool is the 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 actual nodes of the object also come up so don't get confused and click on them and if you accidentally do drag something just remember to control Z to go back alright so it is making a circle and it's filled the circle now let's see what happens if we take this um, the node that holds all the color information and start moving it up notice that it's making our actual the color of our shape disappears because there's nothing behind it, it has no fill now right here where that object was so control Z the other thing you run into on these is that the nodes do overlap in spots so if I was to go select this node make it red select that node turn it red select this node turn it red you can start seeing how it's doing it but there is a cutoff because the circle isn't really closed so the sort of way you do that you have to move the node out of the way and select it then you can get a um, a seamless a seamless transition Now, do notice on these that there is that cutoff, and you have to be particularly careful when working with this one because that will happen. I'm going to press 5 to go full screen. Let's go back to that mesh. The smoothing, if we do select this again, um, coons and by cubic are there, and you can adjust them to. Um, depending on what you're working with and how you're doing it you would want to switch between those two to see what works best for that because if it's more of a rounded 
you might want to use the coons if it's more organic by cubic and to get the effect that you're looking for and that does it for gradient mesh please join us for our next InkScape tutorial diagram connector thanks for watching